equitable education is a global priority for us to live together in a more equal, just, and peaceful world. Families, communities, and institutions all benefit from equitable education. According to TEL Education, equitable education is what empowers students to lead and flourish, but it also leads to increased economic growth and stability and stronger cultural and political foundations for all. This means that reducing disparities and making sure that marginalized groups are included is a priority for all of us for the future of society. Inequity has even been considered by some as perhaps the most serious problem in education worldwide and has many consequences, including differences in access to schooling, retention, and learning. Educate a Child even estimates that the loss of earnings as a result of out-of-school children could represent as much as 1 to 2 percent of the GDP, rising to 5 to 6 percent of the GDP for non-earnings losses. As the world has faced both health and economic crises, these have only slowed down efforts to achieve educational equity. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic cannot be underestimated, having cost students an estimated $17 trillion in lifetime earnings. It has also led to increased learning poverty in both low- and middle-income countries. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, outlines just how important it is for education systems to combine equity and quality, two characteristics that are usually found in the highest performing education systems in the world. It also outlines the high cost of inequity in education systems on society. But what are these costs? They include economic costs, such as a working population with fewer relevant skills and life prospects, lower lifetime earnings, and ability to adapt to the knowledge economy. They also include social costs. This means that those who have not received equal access to educational opportunities are less able to take part in civic and democratic aspects of modern societies, while also damaging social cohesion and mobility. The cultural costs are less documented but are important to explore. If minority groups are not able to learn within their cultural context or language, there is a great risk that generational knowledge will not be passed down to the next generation. According to ethnologues, around 40% of the world's languages are currently endangered, meaning that they are spoken by less than 1,000 people. The benefits of mother tongue-based multilingual education has long been promoted by UNESCO as an important factor for inclusion and quality in education, with research showing a positive impact on learning and learning outcomes. At the same time, it allows learners to keep their mother tongue languages alive as well as learn within their cultural context, especially when these languages risk being eradicated. Overview of inequity in the Asia-Pacific region and the world. With this in mind, we need to carefully consider the big picture when it comes to inequity in education, both in the Asia-Pacific region and the world. As of 2018, it is estimated that 258 million children and youth are out of school worldwide. And as we look closer at disparities between different factors, such as gender, wealth, location, and ethnicity, the gaps only get larger. 80% of children living in rural areas in low-income countries transition to lower secondary education compared to 91% of those in urban areas. Three out of four rich children complete primary education as opposed to one out of four poor children. More than 90% of school age kids in low-income countries are not learning a minimum of reading and math. Only 2% of the poorest girls in low-income countries complete upper secondary school. The poorest children and youth in low-income countries are less than half as likely to complete primary school as the richest, less than one quarter as likely to complete secondary school, one-tenth as likely to complete upper secondary school. In the Asia-Pacific region alone, an estimated 50% of children with disabilities in developing countries did not go to school, with this figure reaching 90% in some rural areas. Overall, the impact of inequity carries heavy costs that prevent the flourishing of future societies and trends 
suggests that the world is becoming increasingly inequitable. It is important now more than ever before to put equity in education first. Inequity might look different depending on your context or country, and you might already have some clear examples in mind of who is the most marginalized. You have a role to play in ending inequity. And in this online course, we will unpack the many ways that you can make education more equitable. So now it's time for you to ask yourself, how can you put equity in education first?